pleasure to welcome Mick here tonight. We're really going to talk a little bit about... So, you know, we'll probably uh, play a little bit of stuff. We're going to open it up for questions, talk a little bit about mixing. Um, so, you know, you guys get your questions ready and we'll, uh, you know, I'm sure Mick's going to have an answer for all of them. Wow. Mick, so <laughs> <laughs> how long have we known each other? I got it. Since 85? Okay, now he's giving on my age away, but. <laughs> <coughs> what about me? Yeah. I'm the oldest <laughs> fart in here. Like. Yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> Given a little bit away, I actually first came to California. I was fortunate enough to get a record deal and um, came into Conway. And I think you were mixing Mr. Mr. Curie. Yeah. First time I'd been in a professional recording studio and listening to that mix over the big monitors. And I was like, wow, this guy. <laughs> and I've been a huge fan since uh, then. <laughs> so mix done, you know, uh, use the, those guys that don't know his discography, you know, everything from... You know, Grammy Award winning for the Daft Punk stuff. I mean, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, um, you've done Snoop, you've done Tyler the Creator, um, you know, anything from Bird Bacharach to you know, <laughs> like hip hop stuff. So you've uh, really covered the gamut in all of these years. Multiple personalities. I yeah, think. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the first thing um, how many people here are mixing digitally in Pro Tools? Yeah. So, you know, for you, Mick, um, you know, you started off, you obviously back in the analog days working with two-inch tapes, but at what point did you really get your first experience with <coughs> digital and then mixing on digital consoles? Um, well, we started recording on digital tape first. I think, yeah. actually, we did stabilizers on That's your right. album. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, part X850s. Of it, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mitsubishi X, X850s. So yeah. the first step is to digital was using digital tape machines, which... Yeah had advantages and disadvantages as long as you um, as long as you made a clone of the tape to go back and forth and do overdubs so you didn't <laughs> accumulate errors mm -hmm. it worked pretty good um, not as good as we have today because only 16-bit resolution the converters weren't as good but um, uh, noise wasn't a problem like it was with analog yeah. wow and flutter speed variations never a problem with it yeah. so it did have some really great advantages yeah and but you were um, I remember the back, the first AES show where we really saw, you know, large format consoles in the digital domain. I think one of them, obviously, Neve had done some earlier stuff. Yeah. I don't think any were installed in commercial music studios um, on the West Coast here. But you were one of the pioneers with the AT and T digital console. Yeah, right? AT and T Digital Mixer Core. So <coughs> any, any this was. Oh. I was going to say, any of you guys remember that? Anybody familiar with yeah. that thing? <laughs> it was. It was a pretty advanced system for its time. It yeah. was a. Um, it originally was built by uh, Bell Labs for um, analyzing submarine sonar um, right. data. <laughs> it had, it was a, it was a rack that um, uh, that had a bunch of DSP in it. I, I forgot how many chips, but they were AT and T 32-bit floating point chips. Mm -hmm. And um, then they decommissioned this stuff. They had a bunch of them, and um, the program ended. So uh, this guy Russ Ham. Uh, thought it was a good would be a good thing to <laughs> adapt these for digital audio, and AT and T was into it. So their engine, some of their engineering staff, wrote code for this for it to be an entire digital console, 64 in, um, 48 out, right. uh, and in, instead of having a control surface, it read the recall and automation off of an SSL console. So you'd have a working analog SSL console. And it had a circuit that just forced the recall on wow. and read it from the computer. So every knob corresponded with a function of this, of this, of this core, plus the fader and mute automation that followed that. Yeah. Um, really worked very well. 32 floating point. It was nice right. and clean. The disadvantage was you couldn't use it for recording. It had a tremendous amount of, of, of latency right. due to that, uh, that all the communication was serial through, right. through the audio. So I think there was about two frames, yeah. about 60 milliseconds of latency. But the way they d designed the software was that the control was at the close end to the right. monitor. So wasn't George Massenberg was involved in that in, in some respect? I don't know. I think I mean. He, yeah. uh, I thought he was maybe involved in the SSL recall, decoding the SSL. Um, oh no, that was for the GML. Yeah. So anyway, so then you left left LA after the earthquake, went to New York. Yeah, but New York is when I got the AT and T. I okay. went to New York not not because of the earthquake, as well partially because yeah. of that, but partially because. I was giving it off, or I couldn't refuse from Tommy <laughs> Matola at the time. Yeah. 